Hey guys, my name is Alicia Burton and uh, today we're going to be working on a really, really fun topic that I love teaching at my youth retreats and at my seminars and it's about uncontrolled emotions. Um, I really feel like so much damage is done in our life with uncontrolled emotions and so many people will say I just couldn't help myself. I got angry and I emotionally blew up at someone and I couldn't help it or I got sad and I had a breakdown and I couldn't help it um, or I got frustrated and then I got violent at my horse or at my child or at my partner um, or at myself and I couldn't help it which leads me to the question of where do these uncontrolled emotions come from okay um, and I personally believe that we all deal with different things we all have a different makeup we all have a different history we're all wired differently but I do believe that we have the power to fully become in control of our emotions so that they do not control us and so that we do not do damage to other people or to the things that we've worked so hard on. So um, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can and this analogy works on some different talks that I use as well so um, I'll put them in my link below at the end. So we have this age-old story, right, of good versus evil. And if you've heard the story before, great, you can hear it again. Why? Because we learn from a thing called consistent repetition. And the more times we can hear something and the more times we can focus and actually um, go through it, the better um, we can learn and the more cemented it gets into us to create a new habit. And every good habit and every bad habit, they have both been trained, whether unintentionally or whether intentionally. And when we do it intentionally, we're aware of what we're doing at the time. We're aware of our emotions and our actions. And when we do it unintentionally, okay, it's like we don't even think about it. It just happens and we're out of control of it. So everything we do actually creates neural pathways in our mind. And the more often we do that, just like an animal track in a, in a pasture, we actually wear that pathway down. And that's why it can be so hard to break um, old habits and create new ones. We've just done it that many times that we don't even have to think about it anymore. And it takes a lot of intentional thinking and acting to actually start to change those things. So the age old story goes like this. We have a good wolf, which is a chipmunk today. And we have a bad wolf, which is another chipmunk. I just want you to pretend like they're wolves. And the age, the age old story is that the good wolf wants everything productive and good for us in our life. And that's what it's fighting for. Um, joy, success, loving relationships, control of emotions, happiness. Um, and this bad wolf here, sorry buddy, I love chipmunks too. It is there to destroy everything positive and good that comes up in our life. And the story goes that these two wolves are constantly fighting each other um, but neither wolf can ever actually die. This means every day, every week, every month, every year, they are both there fighting. And the question is, which wolf wins? And uh, a lot of people will say, well, whatever wolf you believe in, in the most. Um, and, and that's a very destructive way of thinking because believing in something doesn't just make it happen, um, actions make stuff happen, okay? So it's whatever wolf you feed the most, my friend. And we've all heard that, which wolf is stronger, which wolf wins, which wolf gets, um, you know, wins ultimately, whatever one we feed the most. But how do we feed that wolf? So this, um, I use this analogy a lot with horse training that I never have one lesson when I get on my horse. Let's say I'm riding for an hour. It's not one lesson for one hour. It is hundreds of micro lessons built into one hour, okay? Because the more we practice something, little bit by little bit, the better we get at it. So that's why every little thought and decision and word and action is so important and we all have different wolves. <laughs> That's the tough part. 
So what I might struggle with, someone else might not ever struggle with or have that problem. Um, one of my major wolves, and maybe you don't have a wolf, my friend, maybe you have a pack, okay? So for me, it was anger. Um, I used to get angry so quick, oh my gosh. Um, and then I would do things out of my anger, um, actions and that would cause destruction to other people and to myself and to my progress and to my horses um, and that really came about because of unrealistic expectations you know if we have the wrong um, or an unrealistic expectation and that's not met so I think life should go a certain way if I put the right amount of time into it I should get x y and z results now that's setting me up for failure because when that doesn't happen, I experience uh, disappointment. And from that, um, I, that then leads to frustration and anger and all of the rest of it. So for you, it might be, um, it might be jealousy is your wolf and you struggle with it and other people don't. Or it might be self-hatred, okay, self-worth issues, all right? Um, or it could be an eating problem, or it could be a drinking problem, or a drug problem, or a whatever. You know what? We all have wolves, guys, okay? What we need to do instead of casting judgment is just take responsibility and have vulnerability and understand that we're all humans and we're all struggling. And it's our responsibility, um, whoever helped this stuff come up, it's our responsibility to be the very best version of ourselves that we can be. So here's what it looks like. They actually start really tiny, like little yapping chihuahuas, um, little yappy barky chihuahuas, and they don't really do any damage at the start. So what happens is, I'll give an example of a body image wolf. What it could be is that you go to school and you're swimming and some person makes an unkind comment that you are fat in your swimwear or that you have a big backside or there's something wrong with your face um, or you've got four eyes because you wear glasses. People make cruel remarks, okay? And this is how it's usually set off because someone has said something which plants a seed. And then every time we think about it, and we think many thoughts a day. We don't just have one day with one thought. We have one day with thousands and thousands of thoughts. I want you to think this is dog food, okay, that we would give a tiny little chihuahua. Um, we're gonna call it dog kibble or maybe cat food, anything. Basically, one of these <clears throat> tiny little kibbles by itself is nothing. It's a tiny morsel um, and that won't feed anything and it won't really grow anything. And I want you to think of one of these as a tiny thought because every thought we have, what we're actually doing is we're actually feeding the right wolf or we're feeding the wrong wolf. But mark my words, we're feeding whether intentionally or unintentionally. So let's just say that someone says that we have a fat backside and we're like, oh, that hurt. And then the next day, we're trying to get to sleep, or that night we're trying to get to sleep. We don't just think about that one time. We think that we've got a fat backside hundreds of times. And then we start thinking that there's something wrong with us, and the thoughts go like this. <sighs> I'm so ugly. I've got a really big butt, it's really gross. Oh my gosh, if I could just lose weight, then people would actually love me. If I don't get rid of this butt, no guy will ever touch me. Oh my gosh, I'm so gross. I'm so fat and overweight. Gosh, you just can't stop eating, can you? Oh, and it goes on and on and on. So if you can imagine by the end of one day, okay, even by the end of one hour, without really even being aware of the thoughts that we have, by the end of the day, all right, that wrong wolf, they have a, they have a decent sized meal there for the size that they are. And at this stage, we're still very much in control of our emotions and we can actually stop and we can put our thoughts onto something else. We're in control, all right? What about if that was anger? <laughs> okay, it could be someone cutting us off or saying something mean um, and we keep thinking about how I'm so angry, I'm so frustrated. And we, we replay that event over and over and over, yeah? Or for me, when I started performing in front of people, it was 
What if Gold Rush doesn't jump? <laughs> what if you fail in front of everyone? What if, you, I bet you can't get over it. Oh, what if he slips and it was a confidence wolf, okay? What if people realize that you came uh, from a background without training and that you're just a high school dropout and that you're worthless? Oh my gosh, they're gonna figure out who you are, all right? And it was self-doubt and it was confidence and every single little thought I had filled that bowl. Now what that wolf will go and they will eat that very, very quickly and as they do that day by day by day by day, by the end of the week, they've actually grown quite a bit in size. Just imagine this is now, Mr. Chipmunk is now bigger. And what happens when we uh, feed something, it grows and it demands more. And little bit by little bit, like the frog boiling in the pot analogy, we start to lose control as this starts to get bigger. And before we know it, at the end of the month, we have put so much thought and fed this wrong wolf so many times, all right? And it has eaten so much and it has got so big that it is way bigger than our good wolf and this good wolf can no longer fight it. It no longer wins because the wolf that wins is whatever we feed the most, but it doesn't stop there because every thought is just the beginning because every word that comes out of our mouth when we say it out loud and we tell people i'm so fat and ugly okay and we speak these things out loud to ourselves or to other people what we're actually doing my friend is we double the portion size and what we speak okay because our words have power of life or death and we need to be very very careful what comes out of our mouth about ourselves and we need to be very very careful what comes out of our mouth to other people so every time we speak things we double the portion size and this wolf will get so big all of a sudden something that you could once control is now out of your control because it is much bigger and uglier and stronger than you my friend so how do we fix this it starts with being intentional and it starts with getting every single thought and taking it captive. We actually have to stop feeding this wrong wolf, okay, because when we stop feeding it and it's going to bark at you, your thoughts are going to go mental at you and start screaming at you that you've got to give it attention and you've got to give it food because this is how it works. Um, but the longer you starve that, the smaller it gets. But it's not good enough just to ignore it and change our thought pattern. And you have to feed that good wolf. But here's the difficult situation, my friend. You're not going to feel like it because now you've got a problem and now you're convinced that what this wolf says about you and what you're feeling is actually true. I want to let you in on a little bit of a secret. All right, we're not bound to our feelings because feelings are thoughts in motion and they're up and down like a yo-yo all the time. We need to learn to ignore our thoughts and feelings and do what is right. Because when we continually do what's right, even when we don't feel like it, because when you um, feel sad, all right, you want to act sad because it's what you feel like. When you feel angry, you want to act angry. Um, when you uh, feel bitter or jealousy or resentment, you want to act in that way or self-hatred, you want to act in that way. You need to act on what you know is right. And so here is the most difficult part and where most people never get through. So when I'm feeling not confident, um, or I'm starting to feel like, oh man, uh, maybe people won't like to listen to what I say. And it's, you guys, our biggest enemy is our enemy, <laughs> all right? I've never seen any more damage done to a person than what I've done, done to myself. It doesn't come from out here, it comes from within. So what I need to do is I need to start speaking out loud the right thing. And there was a period of time when I actually had a lot of problems with my body image. Because when I grew up, I was really well developed before other girls were. People made fun of it all the time. Um, and even in uh, quite recent relationships, um, I've been like, uh, I've been with people and I don't ever want to drag anyone through the mud because we're human and we hurt other people intentionally and other unintentionally. That gave me a lot of hassle for being too big, okay? And I know that sounds ridiculous, but everyone's feelings are relevant to what they're going through and I don't ever want you to dismiss that. It is what it is. So what I would start doing to combat that 
because I understand this principle and analogy in life is I would start speaking the truth out and it starts with gratitude. I'm so grateful for the body that I've been blessed with and how strong it is. This body is so beautiful because it allows me to free ride and train horses. This body I love because it is so strong, it allows me to shoe my own horses. I'm, I love how strong my legs are and how big they are because I can lift hay bales like a man. Like start speaking out these things even if inside you don't feel them yet. Because when we act on what we know is right, the beautiful thing is our feelings start to catch up. They start to catch up because we're feeding the right wolf and as it grows and as we start to take food away from the negative one, whatever wolf you feed the most, my friend, will win. So if you want to get confident and you're struggling with a lack of confidence, when I go out there, I'm going to do the very best that I can and I am worthy of standing in front of people and performing. I might not have the same background as everyone and that's why my uniqueness is where my strength comes in. I am so blessed to have such an amazing horse. Um, I am so confident today and you just keep feeding and you keep feeding and you keep feeding and you keep feeding and the thoughts that you have about yourself and your confidence and even anger, okay? Anger was a really big one for me. I, got, I get frustrated naturally, very angry. It's just how I am um, born with. So if I get cut off in traffic or if um, the day doesn't go to plan and something interrupts me, instead of getting frustrated, I recognize that immediately. The thoughts that I start to have of, oh, I can't believe that package didn't come today. It was meant to come or that guy cut me off and I nearly crashed. And I'm like, I'm so grateful I didn't crash just now. <laughs> okay, we spin it around. And it sounds stupid at the time, but I promise you, honestly, it works. All right. Um, I'll take that deep breath in and I'll take that deep breath out. By doing that, and sometimes I have to do that 10 to 100 times a day, depending on what I'm doing and depending on where my emotions are at. When we take that big deep breath in and we hold it for seven seconds and we let it out, what it does is it actually takes the emotional energy completely down that we're feeling. It takes the emotional charge out of the situation. And it also takes the physical energy out of our muscles, okay? Because where the mind goes, the man follows, you need to do both. And I do a lot of that when it comes to anxiety training and fear training with riding. Um, another really, really good session to watch. I work with a lot of that. So. I'm going to calm myself back down and then I'm going to speak positivity. I'm so blessed that we even have a postman, okay, because he just saved me a 10 hour flight to go and get that product that I never would have had otherwise. I'm so blessed that tomorrow is another day that I can finish my task off, you know, we're just flipping it because it's impossible um, to feel sorry for ourselves and to be angry and all the rest of it when we have an attitude of gratitude. And I'm not saying never um, actually thinking about our feelings and acknowledging that. I'm saying I acknowledge that I'm feeling angry right now. Now I'm intentionally choosing to go and be grateful and to go and be happy because whatever we practice, we get good at. Okay, so what happens is the thoughts and the words start to fill up this guy's little bowl, he starts to eat it, and day by day by day, week by week by week, our good wolf gets stronger and combats the bad one. So, what I want you to be very aware of, and again, you might have, you might not have one bad wolf, you might have a pack of wolves. Darling, it's never too late to get in control of that. If you feel like you are, um, you're, you're out of control of your emotions and you can't control anything, all right, um, and you feel helpless, understand where this is coming from. Learn to stop feeding the wrong wolf. So here's the thing. Um, at this stage, you have set such strong neural pathways in your mind and habitual thinking that it will be almost impossible to get out of that funk when you're in it. And you know what I'm talking about. You might be angry and fuming for days. You might be sad and depressed for days. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. When I can't control my own feelings because things have got too bad, yeah? And this is maintenance training, it's every single day because whatever we practice, we get good at and our thoughts um, are very, very powerful and so are our words. Remember, the power of life and death are both in the tongue. So what I will do is I will put someone else's thoughts in my mind 
I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of sermons. I listen to a lot of good quality teaching. I'm very careful of those that I let around me. I will not have friends or keep company with people who are habitually negative because <laughs> that's what you're going to end up doing. And I have a really important talk on young people and the power of who you hang around with because if you hang out with wild dogs, you're going to get fleas. There's no two ways about it, young person. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And I'm not saying that y'all have fleas, it's an analogy. If you hang around with someone that gossips, you're going to get those gossipy fleas. If you hang out with someone that's always negative and has a bad thing to say, you're going to catch those fleas and that behavior will start to come off um, on you. So I will put on some, I've got a, like maybe five or six people that I listen to all the time. And what I find is when I listen to their words, it feeds my soul, it feeds my heart, it feeds my good will for me when I don't have the strength to do it. Okay, so if you can't control your thoughts, shut them up, put someone else's on, and I tell you what, your next day will be better, and you keep on going. Um, I've had some really hard times in life, and um, in those incredibly difficult times, I have sometimes listened up to 20 to 40 hours a week of good content. And if I find something good, I'll listen to it 10 times. Why? Because we learn from consistent repetition. All right. And the more times I hear it, the more it gets into me. Um, and really, like if you're listening to music or watching videos that just have filthy lyrics and like just aren't good, don't be surprised when that's feeding your wolf for you. Okay, and so I've got a rule with, um, really interesting, I've got a rule when people come to stay with me and I always have teenagers living with me, it's just what I do, I have for, for like 10 plus years now, it's where my heart is, um, they don't watch horror movies when they're with me. And when I'm like, hey guys, what movie do you want to watch? And they're like, I want to watch a horror. I'm like, no, you're not. But I don't just say, no, you're not. I actually want them to give me the right answer. So I will say, Okay guys, awesome. I'll let you watch that horror movie if you can give me the right answer. Um, how many of you in here suffer from anxiety and stress? Because anxiety is fear, yeah? Fear of often what hasn't happened, yeah? Uh, we fear what will happen tomorrow, we fear what will happen in a year, our graves, our money, our horses, our looks, our friends, our behavior. And most of what we worry about will never even happen, okay? And so anxiety is something that I would say 99% of people that I come across are like, it's an epidemic, anxiety. And then I'm like, how many people in here are on anti-anxiety medication or depression medication? And all the hands go up. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I said, how many people here get terrified watching horror movies or really high suspense movies? And they're like, nope, I'm fine. It doesn't scare me. And I'm like, cool. How many people have anxiety here? And they all put their hand up. Oh, how many people have nightmares? Okay. And they're like, oh yeah, me, I have them all the time. And I'm like, guys, you don't realize that you're actually feeding something inside of you. Okay. What you, when you listen to it, when you see it, you're feeding your mind, you're feeding these wolves, you're feeding these problems. So you don't, um, you don't get frightened when you see people's heads cut, cut off and being chased around by people with a chainsaw because you know it's fake. But here's the thing, you've got huge anxiety. You've got huge fear problems. You can't leave the house without locking the doors 20 times and then rechecking, okay? You're living in fear. So I would say that what you're feeding yourself, okay, is probably having an effect and we need to be very careful what we allow in our heart and in our mind and in our environment. And it's a thing called delay, it's like a delayed response. Every decision we make, all right, is like us taking a seed and we're putting it in the ground. And we don't see the results from that seed in the ground initially until it actually starts to grow and to develop. And every decision we make is a seed planted in the ground that is going to affect our mind, that is going to affect our health, and that is going to affect our future later on. I just want to encourage you, the right decision is always the right decision. And to make a change, all right, to get rid of this stuff, we actually have to start doing something differently. And we need to learn to hold every single individual thought 
captive because they all add up to a very large amount um, and parents this is a really big one for you so often our young people don't have the emotional maturity that an adult does sometimes they have more but let's just say we have a mature adult you be really careful what comes out of your mouth okay if you're a mentor if you're a teacher if you're an, an instructor if you have friends okay and loved ones you be so careful what comes out of your mouth at them and about them because you are feeding their wolf for them as well so if you have a child and they're struggling with confidence issues you know what i want you to start speaking double portions into their life i'm so um like just start lifting them up and building them up. You're gonna be so great today, darling. I know you're gonna go out there and do the very best you can with what you've got in the moment. Not you're gonna go out and win, okay? Because if that doesn't happen, then that comes crumbling down for them. But I'm so proud of you for giving it everything. I'm so proud of you for trying. Start building up their confidence and their self-worth, okay? All right? Um, you are so beautiful today. I love your heart, okay? Because you know what? Y'all can be pretty on the outside, um, but if you're ugly on the inside, you're still ugly, <laughs> okay? So I, instead of, of focusing on the outside, I want you to start focusing on your young person's heart and on the inside because that will start to shine through. I love how generous you are. I love um, what a beautiful heart you have for other people. I love that you um, help out your family and your friends and encourage those good qualities in that person. Um, and don't try and make them be someone they're not. Encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. And don't wait for them to give you the final result before you tell them good job. Encourage the try, okay? Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, guys. Like, I wanna control my emotions so that they don't control me, and that only comes through intentional training. The mind is the battlefield. This is where it is at, because where the mind goes, the man follows. And I don't know about you, but I don't want this guy having any control over my life. He's actually had enough. I feel confident now. I feel beautiful. I feel strong. And I don't emotionally blow anymore at people because I learned a long time ago how to actually control this. Thanks, guys. I hope that helps. See you next time.